Welcome to Respiratory HQ. I'm Tanya Peel and I need to talk to you about blood flow through the heart. Now I know you you learned this in AMP and probably in your cardiopulmonary AMP and respiratory school and maybe several places along the way. And what I found in school is that people memorize this for the test they're about to take and then it kind of goes away. I really need to emphasize how important understanding blood flow through the heart is. I'll give you some reasons why. There are certain aspects of patient assessment that you really have to look for changes in blood through the system. For example, you've heard of jugular venous distension. That is a direct result of what's going on here. You're going to get to a specific um, course in your curriculum that deals with hemodynamics. You have to understand blood flow through the heart forwards and backwards to understand hemodynamics. So if you can get this taken care of on the onset, it'll, ha it'll help. Um, mechanical ventilation. There's hazards of mechanical ventilation that impact this right here and if you understand blood flow through the heart it makes all of these things super easy to understand so I use this this picture in my curriculum every single semester so I'm going to use it with my course content as I'm teaching many courses um, at respiratory HQ so let's just get ourselves acclimated to it what it is is the heart separated into the right side and the left side and so if you remember from anatomy and physiology from the body we have blood that returns to the right side of the heart through the inferior and superior vena cava okay so all of that blood comes in deoxygenated blood which is why it's blue on this side <laughs> deoxygenated blood comes in to the right side of the heart and from the right side of the heart the right atrium blood moves through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle when the right ventricle squeezes that blood moves through the pulmonic valve into the pulmonary artery okay so the pulmonic valve is this little valve right here It is within the pulmonary artery that all of the venous blood gets mixed up really good. Like when everything dumps into the right atrium, it's not all mixed up really good. It takes it moving all the way to the pulmonary artery before that gets really mixed up and is homogenous. I make a point to say that because we're going to talk about drawing mixed venous blood gases. It means venous blood that's all mixed up and the only way you can get a mixed venous blood sample is to pull it out of the pulmonary artery okay so blood goes into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle up through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery and then it moves to the right and left lungs so those those arteries get smaller and smaller and smaller until you eventually have a pulmonary capillary bed it is at this area right here that CO2 is dropped off and exhaled out into the atmosphere and O2 is brought into the bloodstream. Okay, so from the pulmonary capillary bed, oxygenated blood moves to the pulmonary vein. Okay, it's now red on the side of the heart because everything hopefully will be nice and oxygenated. The pulmonary vein to the left atrium. From the left atrium, it flows through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle pumps, the aortic valve opens, and then blood moves into the um, aorta into systemic circulation and blood continues to go round and round in this aspect. Okay, so here it is here. Please work on committing this to memory because it's going to make those areas in your curriculum so much easier if you understand blood flow to the heart. Talk to you soon.